Hey y'all. Well, I'm leaving the office and um, I wanted to talk to y'all about something important. And so, uh, I'll be walking through our usual front gardening experience that is so lovely. I hear baby birdies. It's that time of year, y'all. I've got two new crops of birdies, wrens and bluebirds in my backyard. I love it. I love how nature reminds us of the deity of God, the fact that he made every single creature. And while it may have adapted as it's been here, um, that it is not the same thing as evolution, which means that everything came from an original uh, amoeba cell and then it moved into the amphibious state and the water and then onto land. And from there, land animals grew into different kinds of land animals. And of course, you know, the ape category evolved into man. And yet when I was taught evolution, both in school and in high school and college in my geology courses, it was taught as fact when it is in fact called the theory, not the fact, the theory of evolution or Darwinism. And Darwin himself, I think, was originally a Christian. And um, I read a lot about him and it seemed that he found this and it kind of blew his beliefs. But as he was ending his life, as his life was ending, I didn't mean to imply he ended his life. He said, you know, the fossil record will prove whether or not I'm right or wrong. And the fossil record has proven that all species were here individually at one time. In other words, you had the mammals, then you had, uh, you had um, it, it, exactly as uh, Genesis describes it. You had uh, animals and, and water animals and birds and uh, all of that, exactly as it's described in Genesis has now been proven by the fossil record, which tells us that Darwin, if he were alive today, I wish he got it straight before he died, um, would actually be a Christian or a creationist. Uh, cre uh, Christians believe in creationism, not Darwinism. And um, creationism is that God created everything exactly as he said he did in the book of Genesis. And I just dropped a, b a bottle of juice on the floor. I've got to pick it up before it goes, Oh no, of all the things that could have been, y'all, it was my green juice, which will make a mess if I don't get it up real quick. So hold on. I don't want it to stain my carpet. But anyway, I know this isn't exactly how I wanted this to go. But um, so the bottom line is that, can you see me at all? Do you need to see me or can you just see her being sideways? Oh, I bet people walking by are kind of going, what's she doing talking to herself sideways? Oh my goodness. Luckily, I have some napkins from eating a Chick-fil-A egg light. I mean, egg, um, why can I never say egg white uh, muffin? I, usually, I don't even have the chicken. I just have the, the egg white and cheese on an English muffin. That's what I usually have in the mornings. Even though it's probably better if you went ahead and had the, um, if you had the, um, the protein of the chicken with it. To have that much protein in the morning is really good because it makes you full and less likely to eat more that you don't actually need. Okay, so that's what I get for carrying heavy things. I'm starting to carry my briefcase, which has my, um, it has my um, laptop in it, and it's very, very heavy. I don't need my laptop all the time, but I've needed it enough lately that I think, oh, you should take that with you. And so now I'm carrying that heavy thing around all the time. Even though the laptop's pretty lightweight, and I don't put a lot of extra in my briefcase anymore, it just seems to still be a lot, and I'm trying to make myself lighten up, lighten up, lighten up. Okay. So, um, all right. So we were talking about evolution. I have no idea how I got on this subject except I was talking about central doctrines, but let's go ahead and finish this. Um, so Darwin, Charles Darwin, would have now, if he were still alive, because the fossil record has actually proven that each species was here and then it may have had certain adaptations. And what I mean by that, 
not evolutions into another whole family of beings. When I say family or species, what I mean is it would have gone from being reptiles to being mammals or going from being birds to being fish, you know, changing actual species. Um, Darwinism does talk about changing species, going from one to the other to the other, and that man basically came from apes, which I mean, just common sense would tell you what are apes still doing here if we, if we evolved from them? Did some of them get left out? And some people will say, yes, they were on a different continent. It's like thousands and thousands, millions of years go by and you're saying, oops, they left a couple of them over in, um, you know, different places like I don't even know where they suggest I, I, I can't tell you right now off the top of my head where they suggest I don't know if it's Africa or if it's uh, I would imagine Amazon but who knows what jungles they're talking about that they got stuck in and man went ahead and progressed without them look we're building skyscrapers we're flying to the moon I don't think so common sense but it's still the fossil record God made sure God wants us to believe on faith, but he still, he's let science prove it, prove him out just so that man, the people who are scientific, who believe that they've, they've got to have some scientific evidence, he loves them too and he wants to make sure that they do know. And um, the fossil record has proven that the, the species were all here at one time in different species um, and when I say one time, we don't know when, when God talks about that he spoke different things in the first few days, um, what those days were. Some people, you know, say that could have been a day to God, could have been a thousand years because it's referred that way once. Maybe that's what it means. You know, I think it says um, a day is to a thousand years unto the Lord or something like that. I have to go find where that scripture is. But it wasn't talking about that. So it doesn't necessarily mean... It always was so you know certainly there's an implication from science and carbon dating which I don't trust carbon dating I don't know that they've got it right they'll say well this is 99 millions old it's like you don't know that there's no way to absolutely prove that except for your scientific conjectures if you do a carbon to this and to do that but you don't know that I'm going with the Word of God I do know that and I if God says um, he created light on day one and uh, on day two he created um, you know land and day three he made water and animals and then he made mammals and then he at the end he made man that does not mean that man evolved from all that he made it specifically he tells us exactly how he did it and that it was not from animals it was from his hand he did use the dust of the earth and then he breathed into man after he built him and gave him life breath just like god gives life breath to every single being on the earth um the life breath is also called the soul not just breathing oxygen it's called the soul that god breathes the soul into every single being now what does that tell you and it also says that in job i think it's job either 12 10 or 10 12. I'd have to go look, which does imply for all of you who love your doggies and you wonder, do they have a soul? Yes, they do. They do not have the kind of soul we do. It says that. It says, which is not the same soul as man's. What does that mean? Well, it means, first of all, when we know that man fell, he had already been given charge of all that was on the earth, all, all the animals and everything. He was told to name them. And that when man fell, all of creation fell with him. In other words, the sin of man was cursed upon everything on the earth. So all the animals did not sin, but sin was on them from their um, being under submission to man. And so the Bible tells us that um, creation groans waiting for the return of Christ. G creation knows Christ. That's what that tells you. And also that it's it, it knows that Christ is coming again. So it knows its maker. It knows it's God. Um, not It doesn't speak in the way that we do or any of that. And it's not, uh, because it's not, nature is not actively sinning, like choosing to sin. Like a lion doesn't choose to eat a gazelle, which we would think, oh, it's killing it. That's the fall. Um, uh, that aggressiveness and that killing nature is on animals. But they won't do that anymore when Christ returns. How do we know that? Because one of the symbols of Christ's return is that the, um, the wolf will lay with the lamb and that the lion will lay with the lamb. Those two examples that we're, we're told about, one of which is a sign of the return of Christ, um, 
implies that there's no longer that death relationship. There's no longer that aggressive killing where an animal kills another animal and eats it. That's That'll be all over with. Um, so, in the meantime, do they need to be saved? No, because they did not sin. So, they don't need to be saved from their sin. They already know the Savior. They know Him as Master and God. Uh, but they do not need, like man does, to make a decision to stop sinning and turn towards Christ because they don't sin actively. They have the sin nature on them. By the way, when we... Um, are giving our life over to Christ and we decide to repent from our sin we're gonna we're gonna make a willful decision that we don't want to sin anymore doesn't mean we'll do it perfectly that's why he went to the cross because we won't do that perfectly but we have to make a willful decision that we don't want to sin anymore that's called repentance and it's a thing of the heart and only God knows the heart only God knows if a person means it or not. That's why we are told, judge not lest you be judged. And that's what that's talking about. That, by the way, isn't what it's talking about. To have government within a church body where you have accountability for any sinful behavior. That you do need to judge. So Christians can judge of their Christians, especially when it comes in a loving manner. And it's to have accountability to behave in a fashion that points people towards God. Because Christians are supposed to point people towards Christ. That's our Savior, and the world needs to know about our Savior, and so we're supposed to point towards Christ. And so if, if I see that you're sinning, as a Christian, I need to come to you in love, not in haughtiness or thinking I'm better than you, but in love going, oh, you're in trouble. I need to tell you about this. And because I'm loving you and taking that risk to come to you like that, it's hard to do sometimes. Um, just in our fleshly nature, it's hard to do. It's scary to do. You should receive that from me and say, you know what? She's come. She's pointed this out to me. Biblically, she's correct. What I'm doing is wrong and I need to repent. So that is judgment. Our God is a judge. That is judgment, and um, within the church, within the church is all the Christians, and especially within the, the physical church and the government of a church, like a pastor and the teachers and all that, they definitely need to be held accountable as well because they're leading other Christians as well as unbelievers coming into the church and seeing how does this thing run. And so it's very important what our behavior is like. So that within the church, we judge. Outside the church, we don't. Um, that's because there is no judgment outside the church except that people are going to be going to hell. Um, and that's not for us to decide. Inside the church, the judgment's on our behavior. Outside the church, the judgment is on whether or not someone knows Jesus Christ, whether they're going to heaven or hell. And that's based on whether or not they've made that willful decision to repent from their sins. And then if they made that decision, the Holy Spirit, and, they, and you invite God in to take over your life. Who's God? Well, you have to know who he is. We've talked about that's an essential doctrine that Jesus Christ is God. He will come into you in the form of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will live in you. Remember, Jesus Christ came in the flesh and then at the end of his life he went back to be seated at the right hand of the Father and he said I will not leave you alone as an orphan I will send another and he sent the Holy Spirit who is the Holy Spirit Jesus yes but in spirit well what do you mean yes it's Jesus well he's God he's God the Holy Spirit Jesus is God the Son the Father is God the Father all three of them are God. They're all equally God, but their roles are separate. The role of the Father, the role of the Son, especially the fact that he had two natures, but the role, I mean, the nature of um, God, and then also the nature of man. He's the only one of the three that came here and took on a human form, uh, which we find out in uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14. It says he, he, um, he came and... Um, it took on flesh and dwelt among us and but before that when you look at John 1 1 through 3 it's very clear that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was with God in the beginning and then he became incarnate or he incarnated he became a human and he dwelt among us so that's why he has two natures the nature of God and the nature of man but there's still three forms or personalities if you will persons if you will of God that's God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit. God the Father and the Holy Spirit are both spirit form. Now Jesus is too uh, because he came in the flesh but he is no longer flesh. So when we accept him as our master, our God, our Lord and Savior, um, 
he comes into us in the form of the Holy Spirit and he lives with us within all of us who accept him and he will work out the living out the behavior the repentance he will give you the gift of faith to believe in him we don't even have enough faith to believe in him it's a gift from God a free gift from God and he says if you ask me for it you'll get it and he tells us that that is a free gift of faith uh, not works lest anybody should boast about say it was something they did that got them saved no it's not it's just placing your faith in Jesus Christ the one and only Son of God or God in the flesh um, that saves you and that the work that he did on the cross that he came here he lived as a human being he died on the cross and he raised on the third day that work that he did was a sacrifice that was needed for the repentance of sin of all mankind and that when we submit ourselves to God then that is our sacrifice we accept that as our payment for our sin and we are out from under the wrath of God that everybody else who has not chosen God Jesus Christ will suffer the wrath of God for sin but not if you accept Jesus Christ's sacrifice for sin then that applies to you so um, and that is how you get out of it Jesus did it Jesus is the one who did this sacrifice that you should do but you can't you're not even good enough because he was the only one that was pure enough and holy enough to do it he's done it for all mankind so it's a level foot at the cross doesn't matter who you are what color you are what race you are what gender you are it does not matter who you are if you will repent from your sins and say Jesus I believe that you are God and I don't want to sin anymore Will you give me the power through your Holy Spirit not to do that? And I will, for the rest of my life, serve you. And then the rest of your life, he comes into you and he teaches you and shows you what that means. He has a personal relationship with you. He just wants to be with you and talk with you. And you talk with him and see all kinds of mighty things. Sometimes you'll see horrible things. Sometimes you'll see joyous things. And through all of it, he will see you through all of that. So this is temporary this uh, this is where we make that decision this is where we uh, see what the fallen state uh, has done to the earth and um and then we get saved from the result of that which is sin and the wrath of god and then when we die we will go to be with him and one day he will return and um there's all kinds of stuff that we, we need to talk about about the end times and and when he returns and what will happen the thousand year reign all kinds of stuff like that but in the end god himself will again walk with man like he did originally on the earth it will be a perfected earth it will be perfect and better even than before there'll be no sin condition anymore it will be absolutely amazing by the way it says that it will be a crystal sea so when people talk about that there will be a sea no more there'll be a no more be a sea like the one here that's dark that has animals in it that can kill you that if you fall into it and you are miles and miles away from a shoreline you would drown that won't be the condition of the new sea it's crystal clear you can see straight through it you're not going to be bound by a human body anymore the way we are now i don't know if god's going to give us new gills i don't know if he's just going to make it where we can breathe through water like when we're in our mother's womb he's going to make it perfect we don't understand all of it but we do understand a lot i hate when people say we don't know anything about heaven yes we do we know a lot about heaven we know a lot about getting there jesus christ we know a lot about what it's going to be like there if y'all want to talk about heaven heaven itself maybe we'll make that one of the bible studies we can we can um talk about that comment below if you want to talk about the end times comment about it below uh tell me the things you want to talk about but um, and I was what I was going to talk to you all about is the two other essential doctrines. We've covered one of them, which is the monotheistic view, which is monotheism. Mono means one. Theos, theology is the study of God. Or um, monotheist, it means that we believe in one God. And so that one God is Jesus Christ. So that, the deity of Christ, is the number one thing that Christ told us in John 8, 24. Except that you believe that I am he, or that I am who I say I am, you will die in your sins. And the Pharisees said, well, then who are you? And then in John 8, 58, he said, I am. And that was his name. And they understood that it was his name because they were going to, what? They were going to stone him for it, which proves they understood exactly what he meant. And there's other places where it says, hey, you're saying you're equal to God. You're calling yourself son of God, which is the same thing as saying you're you're equal to God and Jesus also said I and the father are one I've given you all of Jesus's God's scriptures in that other 
video on the deity of Christ being a central doctrine. Um, but also, uh, when you look at Exodus 3.14, that is where God called himself I am. That's a name. That's not um, a state of being verb. Like we go I am or I was. You know, it's a state of being, being verb. No, no, no. It's in all caps. It is a proper noun. It is a name. And in and, and Exodus 3.14, he says, this is my name. I am that I am or just I am. This is my name forever for all future generations. He's very, very clear about it. And Jesus is very, very clear that he's saying that name. So if in in John 8 58 he says that's my name and John 8 24 he says you got to believe that or you don't go to heaven you remain in your sins you which what happens with you remain in your sin you will go to hell you don't go to heaven so that's the deity that's the important thing about Christ that was the central doctrine number one the central doctrine number two that we talked about was the inerrant word of God or inerrant means without error meaning the word of God in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the word itself is holy because it is Jesus Christ then Jesus Christ the spoken word of God God himself became a human being and he was an incarnate being or a, a, a being with flesh on he's still the word of God and so we know that the word of God is without error. And when people say, well, how can you be sure that man got it right? If God can part the Red Sea, if God can spin planets into orbit, he can make sure that the word of God gets all the way down, all the way through all the publishers, all the writers. Get They get it down right. They get it interpreted correctly. They get the meaning of it right, even with different denominational pulls on translations and versions. And, you know, I've heard that the Muslims say, well, see, this is why you don't want a part of the Christian faith because they can't even make up which Bible. There is only one holy Bible. And we've talked about, when I talked about the Word of God being inerrant and where we get our Bible from in um, the Essentials Doctrine and also another uh, video that I did on um, where do we get the Word of God. I talked about all this in great detail, so I want to go back into that again right now. But it's very clear that those are two essential doctrines. And the other two are the salvation that we have through the grace of God through faith. People say through grace. It, that's not it's how he words it. He says uh, that it is by the grace of God that you've been saved. Meaning it's just by the grace of God that you've been saved. Meaning the gra he's decided to, by his grace, he's decided to. Through what? Faith. And this faith is a gift from God. Not by works, lest any man should boast. What does that mean? That means that, that's Ephesians 2, 8, 9, by the way. And what does that mean? That means that what God's saying is, I'm the one that's actually decided by my very grace that I'm going to do this. And how I'm going to do it? I'm going to do it through faith. And not faith that you have. You will be given by an act of you asking the very gift, it's a free gift. It's something I have to give you. You don't have enough faith, but I can give you enough faith. I will teach you throughout your life what you need, but I can give you the initial faith you will need to be saved. It's a free gift. It's not anything at all that you will do. No rituals, no nothing. The, even the faith to believe is from him. All we have to do is the choice, the decision. He's given all of mankind choice. It's so funny to me people talk about choice in America or uh, and that there isn't in other nations. There's choice that is given that is human and it is because God gave us choice. If he didn't give us choice, we wouldn't have choice. But he did give us choice and it's because he wanted our love to be real, not robotic, not something he forced, but something we chose. And even though we've screwed up ever since, he said, I'm still going to have a plan for you to get you back to me because I love you so much. I can't stand to be away from you. I'll get you back. But you got to place your faith in me. Well, we're too weak. I know. I made you weak. I want you weak. I want you dependent on me. I want you to adhere to me. I want you to rely upon me. So what I'm going to do is make you weak enough that you can see your need of me and I will be strong when you lean on me when you place your faith in me I will give you the faith you need and I will show you that it's me that is strong when you see all the crazy stuff going on instead of choosing happiness choose the joy of the Lord because joy is regardless of happiness you can have joy how because God will give it to you and he says that's where you'll get your strength from the joy of the Lord is your strength. He tells us this. I'm getting all worked up like I'm some kind of a preacher, dude. Anyway, so that's one of the things we're going to cover. The second thing we're going to cover, well, actually, the, we talked about the first two. That'll be the third. 
The fourth thing we'll talk about is that you must believe on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You must know that you need to repent. You need to know that he came here, that he lived a perfect life, and that he died and that he was raised again on the third day. That is a non-negotiable essential of the Christian faith. So those are the things we're going to talk about. I know I've talked way too long, and I will talk to you again soon. I love you so much. I don't know what all I've left out. I was on the soapbox. Love you. Bye.